The scripture tells us very clearly about what the apostles were supposed to do, what they were going to do. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. Now, how could that happen? Jesus ascended into heaven. He's gone. Where did he go? Well, he went to heaven. So I can just imagine this. Just imagine this. Thomas says, he's gone again. Now what are we going to do? And then Peter says to him, Thomas, calm down. Stop doubting. Because we have to remember, Jesus ascended into heaven, but they were still really weak, confused, and questioning everything, doubting everything, like Thomas, I'm sure. Thomas was the more vocal, of course, because the Holy Spirit didn't come yet. That was to come later on. And so another thing would be, why didn't Jesus do all of this himself? Why did he have to depend on these 12 guys who were not perfect? Half the time, they were fighting among themselves, they are arguing. One of them, or two of them, wanted to bring down thunder and destroy the Romans and the empire and everything. These were a kind of bunch of confused guys. Well, they were confused because you had someone among them who was changing everything. And there were so many people that left Jesus. I don't listen to this guy, eat my body, drink my blood. I'm gone, man. I'm going somewhere else. But these 12 stayed. Pretty stubborn, I guess, every single one of them. I'm going to say this, okay? And I've thought about this. I've prayed about this a lot. Jesus does not stand alone. How many pictures do we see of Jesus? Jesus does not stand alone. Now, let's take a look at this. I'm going to call this Christian logic. We can put the puzzle together. Jesus does not stand alone. Jesus never stood alone. He never did. He never stood alone. When um, The only time he was alone is when he was communing with his father. He went off to the mountain. He went off to pray. He wasn't alone. He's with the father. He was never, never alone. He never stood alone. Jesus does not stand alone. Even when he was on the cross, he didn't stand alone. He had these two guys beside him. One was going to go to paradise. We don't know what happened to the other one. And he got all these people down there. His poor mother, who was pretty sure in anguish, being May, this beautiful, wonderful mother of God, and our mother also. And then you got John. John didn't run away like the other guys. The other ones ran away, and Peter denied him. The other guys are really they're pretty goofy. Oh, excuse me, I shouldn't say that. But anyway, so anyway. This is what we say. And I'm going to say this too. Okay. Jesus does not stand alone in heaven. Jesus does not stand alone in heaven. Now, by Christian logic and the sacred scriptures, we come to understand in our faith, Jesus does not stand alone in heaven. He doesn't. The church triumphant. Now, some of you may remember that from the catechism of the Catholic Church, not only the Baltimore Catechism, but, uh, you know, the, the, the current catechism, the church triumphant. What does that mean? You know, we're the church militant here on earth. Then there is the suffering in purgatory. But then you got the church triumphant. What's the church triumphant? The church triumphant, the angels, the saints... Mary, his mother, and all the saved. That's the church triumphant. And they're not alone. They're together. They're together. And so, I'm going to say this in contemporary terms. I'm going to use a contemporary word. Okay. Jesus is a delegator. You know what that means? Delegator. That means you're going to let somebody else do it. <laughs> because you trust them. 
You ain't going to delegate if you ain't going to trust the person you're delegating to. It makes common sense. Jesus is a delegator. He delegates his mother, Lourdes, Fatima, other places probably. He delegates his mother, the angels, the saints, to help us in his name. There is a whole bunch of people in heaven. A whole bunch of people. And so we look at it this way. Jesus is not in a holding pattern. He, you know, he's not alone in heaven in a holding pattern. Ah, I can't wait to get back there. <laughs> he's going to come a second time, so he's in a holding pattern. Jesus is never in a holding pattern. And so anyway, Jesus is not in a holding pattern. And also, Jesus is not a loner. Jesus is not a loner. I'm on my own. I can do it all myself. I'm the son of God. I don't rely on anybody. I ain't delegating. Because the only way you can get something done is you can do it yourself. You want it done right. Do it yourself. You know how we've heard that probably many times. Okay. You can't isolate Jesus or set him apart. You really can't. You really can't. And the logic of that is impeccable. That is... It's not what it's all about. That's not what it's all about. Heaven. And I, we don't hear this enough. Heaven is a family. It's a community. A fullness of everything. Everybody should have a church. Why do you think we have the church? It's necessary for the salvation of souls. And so when we think about a man without a church is like a man without a country. Without a country. He has a citizenship nowhere. Wouldn't it be too bad if somebody who doesn't have a church after this life finds themselves totally alone? Speculation. Speculation. The church is necessary. Without it, nothing's going to be done. And so, there's so much in our society that kind of goes against going to church. Going to church. And so anyway, now the apostles and Mary saw Jesus ascend into heaven. Can you imagine Mary seeing her son go to heaven? What if one of your kids ascended into heaven? You'd be kind of happy, wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, because we're all hoped that we're all going to go there, right? I mean, you know, it's kind of interesting. God, that'd be, that'd be really invigorating, to say the least. Ascended into heaven. And so, Jesus, what does he do? He delegates. He says this. Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. That's only going to happen through the church. The church is really like heaven on earth in the sense that with all us frail people, imperfect people like the apostles, we've been delegated. And we better take on that responsibility to do the Lord's work, to be a church, to be a church. Jesus... And I'm going to say this, okay? And I might get in trouble for saying this, but I don't want you to misunderstand this, okay? Jesus is not just our own personal Savior. He's not. Look at it this way. Jesus is our, our Savior. That's the church. Our Savior. Our church. Universal everywhere, always. Amen.